if you have endometriosis, there is nothing that you want more in this whole entire world than a cure. I'm not gonna go into details right now about the nitty gritty of what endometriosis is because that's not what this video is about. I'm gonna talk about the latest endometriosis research that's available right now and that will be available in the future. Let's just get the crappy one out of the way first, shall we? Please stick around though. I promise you there's gonna be some really cool stuff we're gonna talk about. So what would be the last thing that you would want out of endometriosis research? For me, it would be another hormonal treatment. Enter Oralissa, another GnRH, which is a gonadotropin releasing hormone antagonist. We already have some treatments like this. One of them is called Lupron, which is an injection that you get every few months and you can only get for a certain period of time because it causes an artificial menopause. That's what Oralissa does, only it's in pill form. So it is slightly better than the Lupron, but Again, it has all of the nasty side effects. Oralissa can cause things like bone loss, vaginal dryness, breast swelling, weight gain, mood swings, acne, like the list goes on and on and on, just like all the rest of them. I'm not saying that it's not gonna be an effective drug for some people because it is gonna help a lot of people. I'm just saying that it's gonna be contraindicated for a lot of conditions that some people already have and it's just generally not gonna be well tolerated by a lot of others. I do know some people who have benefited from this drug so far. You can't be on this drug forever, so I believe you can only take it for about six to eight months and then you need to stop because of the bone loss that it can create and all the other detrimental side effects. So it's not something that you're gonna be able to use as like an ongoing pain relief treatment. And that kind of defeats the purpose because the whole point of treating endometriosis is treating the pain. I mean, also fertility issues, but pain is one of the biggest problems. So onto the exciting stuff. So the next one is fluorescence imaging. So I'm just gonna segue a little bit so you can get a bit of an understanding why the fluorescence imaging is important. The Endometriosis Foundation of America states that laparoscopic excision surgery for endometriosis is the gold standard treatment. The whole goal of this surgery is to remove endometriosis lesions and preserve healthy tissue. So if you can think about endometriosis like a cancer that does not kill you, it's a bit easier to understand the whole mechanism of endometriosis. There are lesions that develop in the pelvic cavity, not in the uterus, but in the pelvic cavity, and they should be inside the uterus and then shed but they don't, they get trapped in the pelvic cavity. And these lesions can be the size of a pepper flake. So cutting all of them out, and you do have to cut them all out, and you have to cut them at the root. And cutting them all out is really hard because they can be that size. So you can imagine that it's really difficult for surgeons to get every last bit of endo, but endo grows just like cancer. And it grows and it grows and it, like infiltrates into tissue and into organs, and it even develops its own blood supply. It's a very insidious disease. Cutting out the lesions can help the pain of endometriosis, but oftentimes it grows back. The other thing is to truly diagnose endometriosis, you actually need to have that surgery and have the lesions cut out so they can do a pathology report. So remember I just talked about how endometriosis develops its own blood supply. Okay, so, there is a clinical trial in the Netherlands that's aiming to use fluorescence imaging, which is like a green dye that illuminates that vascularization of the endometriosis so that surgeons go in there and they're able to find every last bit of it. This would make surgery a lot more effective. Of course, the downside is you still need surgery and you still need a surgeon who knows what they're doing, which is actually really hard to find. And when you do find them, they usually have a very, very long wait list. So remember I just said that you need to have surgery in order to diagnose endometriosis. Well, there is some really exciting research that's pointing to a possibility of diagnosing women just through their menstrual blood. Researchers found that the blood of women with endometriosis actually had altered stem cells and natural uterine killer cells. There's more research needed, but this is really exciting because it means that there might possibly be a day in the near future where we don't have to be cut open just to be diagnosed. 
Research from Northwestern Medicine found that they could transform unhealthy cells into healthy cells. They're doing this through this process of taking the woman's own iPS cells, which are a type of stem cells, and transforming them into these healthy cells from the unhealthy cells that are causing pain and inflammation. It's kind of like a transplant in a way, but since the cells are from that woman's own iPS supply, there's no risk of any kind of rejection that you would get in something like an organ transplantation. So more research is needed, but it looks like cell-based therapy could be a potential long-term solution for endometriosis. The last one is gene therapy. This is way over my head, but I'm going to attempt to tell you what it is. This comes out of Yale University and a study that was published recently. The cause of endometriosis is still not known, but some research suggests that the suppression of certain genes may play a part. Okay, bear with me, it's gonna get a little technical. Scientists at Yale University published a study finding that the microRNA LET7b, a genetic precursor that controls gene expressions, is repressed in women with endometriosis. The solution would be to administer LET7b. Researchers saw huge reductions in endometriosis lesions when they injected mice with LET7b. More research is still needed before it can go to clinical trials for humans, but if this is effective, it means that there is a non-surgical non-hormonal, non-invasive way to treat endometriosis. That's huge. Okay, so there you have it. This is the latest research for 2018 and 2019. As for 2020, there is nothing so far. What can you expect from a year like this? If you wanna know more information on any of the treatments that I mentioned, I'm gonna put the references down below in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below with any of your thoughts, opinions, or experiences. I'll see you all in the next video.